and thanks for joining me. And in this video, we're going to talk about how to use Google Sheets to create pixel art. Now, this idea came to me from a fellow techie named Alice Keeler, who posted an article on her website about how to do this. And I thought I'd put together a video that kind of shows in detail how you can set up a Google Sheet and use it to make pixel art in your classroom. Now, as you can see here, this is a typical Google Sheet. And what I've done over here on the left is I've created a color map so that students can see which numbers correspond to which color. And once you get your sheet set up, all you have to do is click in a cell and type the number that corresponds to the color you want to add to that cell and hit enter. And it will automatically fill that cell with that color. Now, in order to set something like this up, start with a basic Google Sheet. And at the top left here, we'll click on the little awesome box at the top left of a Google Sheet. And it highlights the whole sheet. And what we're going to do is we're going to use column A to resize all of the cells in this sheet so that they're a little bit smaller and it creates a pixel grid. So once I let go, we've got our pixel grid. Now, if you need more space, you can always highlight these columns of cells, copy them, and then paste them onto the end to add more pixels to your page. But for right now, this is good for what I need. And then, like I said, we want to create a little color map so that students can know which number corresponds to which color. So we're going to do that. And I'm just going to put a 1 and a 2 here. And a little trick to this, if you don't want to type every single one of these numbers, all you have to do is highlight these two cells, grab this little handle, and then pull down for as many cells as you need. And it will copy down that text or those numbers for you. There we go. And so for number one, I want that to be red. And so I just picked that from the fill color. And I can go down the line and do the same thing for the rest of these colors, just as I've done on our previous sheet. OK. And I'm going to go ahead and do that quickly so that we can save time. So there we go. We've got our colors. Now, beyond doing that, that is just a map so that students know which numbers to enter for which color. What we need to do now is we need to format all of these cells so that when a student enters a number, it will automatically fill it with the corresponding color. See, right now, if I type in the number 3 and hit Enter, all we see is 3. So to make this work, what we need to use is a tool in the Format menu called Conditional Formatting. So I'm going to highlight all the cells where I want this to be applied. And I just want this area right now, but you can do your entire sheet if you want to. Just make sure you leave out these two columns so it doesn't affect your little color map. And I'm going to go to the Format menu and choose Conditional Formatting. So here you can see it's applying to the range that I've highlighted, C1 through Z27. OK, and that's that entire range there. And I'm going to say if is equal to, and I'm going to type the number 1. And of course, number 1 is red, so I'm going to say if the cell is equal to 1, then we're going to change the text color to red and the fill color to red and hit done. And so that applies that rule. And so now, anywhere that we type a 1 and hit enter, it will automatically fill that with red. And it will change the number 1 that's in that cell to a red font so that it matches the fill color. So we'll do this one more time. And I'll go ahead and add a new rule for number two, and I'll say if is equal to two, make the text color orange and the fill color orange, and hit done. And so we've, we're just going to go on down the line, adding these conditional formats using these fill colors. And when we're finished, we will have a set of rules such as these. As you can see here for this page, I've gone ahead and I've made the value. If the value is equal to each number, it will fill and change the text color to that color. And so now anytime I type a number over here on the, on the grid, it will automatically use the color associated with it. Now, what can you use this for? If we're in an elementary classroom, this is a great tool to give kids something a little bit different to do that incorporates both art and computers. You could use this in an art class. Um, you could also use this to create 
uh, pixel art that you could then export for use on a web page. So one of the easiest ways to do that, since there is no export tool that allows you to save it as a ping file or a picture file, is to use a tool such as the Snagit extension for Google Chrome. So here I have Snagit up here on my toolbar, and I'm going to capture a region, and I'm just gonna draw a box around my little piece of pixel art, and click the snapshot tool, and it will save that as an image file that I can use later. Now, of course, this is kind of big for pixel art, so one of the things that I might wanna do is go back up here to the awesome box and then just change the width and the height of my cells a little bit to make this a little bit smaller so that it can be used as pixel art. And of course, uh, you'll have to do some playing around, but once you get it the way you want it, your possibilities for creating pixel art are unlimited. You can even go to the file menu and you can publish your document to the web and get an embed code so that your kids can put their artwork on a web page or save it as a PDF that they can then put on a web page or print off for their own refrigerator artwork. So hopefully this gives you some ideas of what you can do with Google Sheets and conditional formatting for pixel art. And thanks for joining me.